Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking all about the Solar Auxilia faction for Horus Heresy the Age of Darkness from Libra Imperium. This is going to be a series of videos, with this being part one, focusing on the faction rules. In this video, we're going to be talking about Tercios, the interesting way that Solar Auxilia armies are built, the close order subtype, which is a specific kind of subtype that makes the army play in a very specific way, and also all of the various cohort doctrines that you can use to add flavor and some abilities to your army. But before we do that, if you enjoy the show, please do like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave me any feedback in the comments down below. And also don't forget to join us on Discord as well in the Heresy Discord community, which is linked in the video description too. And now on with the show. The Tercio rule is a special rule that changes the way that the infantry in your army are taken and the way that they work on the tabletop. So effectively, it's multiple units that behave in, in some respects kind of like one unit. So they occupy a single slot on the force organization chart, which is kind of necessary if you're going to take a lot of units because these units are so cheap, you would fill your force org up and still have lots of points left otherwise. So the way they generally work is you'll have like a command unit, which which may or may not be optional, and then a number of elite or basic troops as well that all form part of the tertio. So you might take like a command unit and two units of infantry, and they will count as one tertio. You deploy them as one unit, and they've got to be deployed. So one model from each unit is within three inches of another unit in the tertio. And if they are within three during the game as well, they count as being in formation, which is a special rule that, you know, does some things, which we'll talk about later. Now, obviously, you only have to have one model within three inches. So in theory, these can string out or sort of deploy fairly, fairly far apart from each other as long as, you know, a couple of models are close. But it does still make you put your units close-ish together. You know, it makes you put them or pack them more densely on the table than you might otherwise. You know, if you had three units, individual units, you might spread them across the table wherever you want for objectives or something like that, or put them behind individual pieces of cover to hide them. Whereas this unit does restrict the way you place them. Sorry, this rule restricts the way you place the unit slightly and definitely gives you a bit of a disadvantage when people are shooting blast weapons at you or something like that it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to hit more models but because there's lots of models in the same area of the board even if they scatter they're probably still going to hit something etc etc so that's a bit of a disadvantage the major advantage of a tercio uh, besides reducing the number of slots you use in your force org chart is that the whole unit can react if they are in formation the whole tercio can react if they're in formation so if you've got three squads of 10 infantry and they are in formation with each other and someone shoots at them, all 30 models can shoot back. If someone moves near one of them, they can all move. That's a super, super powerful. Now, obviously, these individual models tend to be less powerful than Space Marines, but they're still very good. And 30 of them, or perhaps more, all reacting on one reaction is super good. Now, this army doesn't have warlord traits though. So in some ways this, you know, is compensated for the fact that, you know, marine armies would have an extra reaction, but you know, it just changes the dynamic and is and is very powerful. Then we've got the close order subtype. Now, I wouldn't normally include something as granular as a subtype in a faction rules review, but I've included this one because it really does change the way the army plays and it also sort of works, uh, you know, as similar effects on your army as the tertio does. The Solar Auxilia Rifle section, which is your main unit, the unit that you will use the most in the army if you're going to use infantry, has this. It means that your coherency distance is one instead of two. So it packs the unit more closely together. The unit can't run and gets minus one initiative for movement reactions as well, so they move less far. Effectively, this is representing, you know, line infantry that you might imagine from, you know, historical things like, you know, Rock Drift or Zulu or something like that, you know, guys with guns in a firing line, moving up the battlefield very slowly. But they do get the ability to move half their normal movement and still shoot heavy weapons, which is good. So it's a steadily advancing line of troops, shoulder to shoulder, you know, cutting down the enemies. And that's quite an important rule because Laz rifles, which they use uh, as their default weapon, are a heavy weapon. And it's a, it's a really good gun as well, much better than a Laz gun in 40k. It's a really good gun. And it is heavy, so if you do want to uh, move and shoot them, well, you need this rule to do so effectively. Also, as well, it means you can shoot rapid fire and heavy weapons and charge. And while these guys aren't particularly great at melee, 
you know, sometimes you're going to want to run some melee for various reasons, objective, locking down an enemy unit, maybe it's a small unit you want to finish off. So that's an advantage as well. So between this and Tertio, we really are getting the sort of idea of an army that packs all the troops close together and, you know, sort of like advances and works as a unit, but with lots of men on the board. The next thing we're going to talk about is cohort doctrines, and there are quite a few of these. Now, these are your equivalent to Space Marine Legions-ish, kind of, really. They give you some special rules. Now, they're enabled by taking a Solar Marshal in your army, which is a character the same way a Praetor enables Right to War, kind of. And you're basically always, almost always going to take the marshal. All of these rules are good. Even some of the more basic ones you're always going to want in your army. So you're probably always going to take a marshal. For those army-wide abilities, some of them are powerful. Some of them are definitely better than others. And some of them are just flavorful. You know, they're not maybe quite as powerful, but they do give you a, a theme for the army that you may want to build around. Most of these have got relevant restrictions as well. I push a theme on your army. Often in the kind of often in the kind of manner of restricting vehicles or restricted infantry if you're doing an army that is mostly one or the other. But we'll go through those now. So the first is a solar pattern cohort. So this makes the Velataris Tercios, which are the elite solar auxilia, basically the elite guys, makes them become troops and line, which is always a great thing to be able to do, depending on the type of missions you're playing. But you know, making your elite stuff line is good. Uh, we'll we'll talk about this unit in a future episode, but you know this is what it does makes them line. It also lets them use Arvus transport as a dedicated transport, so they can be airborne instead of being in their ground based transports too. So you can see them storming some enemy positions with these elites using their airborne transports. But they do mean that you can't take more than one armored tertio, which are tanks or artillery tertios, which are obvious in your army. So no more than one of each of those, which isn't too bad a restriction if you're going to focus on the elites. Uh, but the armored tertios are really good, so it is definitely a relevant restriction. The next one is Ultramar Pattern Cohort. So these are uh, following a very specific doctrine, which the rules for this really play into. So normally a rifle tertio, which your normal troops can have up to three rifle sections in it. This means they can have up to six in it. And if you think about what that means for reactions, if you shoot this unit and it's got a command squad and six rifle sections, that's like 65, 70 men return and fire at the enemy that's shooting at them which is like crazy insane amount of shots coming back your way but it also means on the flip side if the enemy's bringing blasts it's a lot of men in one part of the board that are going to be taken off by blast weapons or flamers maybe as well it also gives infantry models in those rifle tertios plus one to hit while they're base to base with a model in their own unit so you have to pack these even tighter to get that bonus now they've only got one inch coherency anyway most of the time that the units this will be relevant on because of close order so you're not you know you're not going from two to zero but you know it is still packing them even tighter again and flamers in particular you know a, a unit of men even in a line flamers will just tear these guys apart if uh, if you take this many but in return plus one to hit with that many shots as well Ooh, that's a lot of stuff if you want to paint that many models on the flip side they don't get to take dedicated transports so they will be walking up the board in a mass of infantry which is a really interesting way to build an army. Like I say, I'm not sure who the people would be who would make armies like this with hundreds and hundreds of men in them. You'll probably never see them on the tabletop. But, you know, if models weren't an, ob weren't, uh, an obstacle, I think you would certainly see people using this. And you might have the fortune to come across this at some point, maybe with someone who's got an Imperial Guard army using them as solar auxilia. Next, we've got the Reborn Cohort. Now, this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, from in terms of both power level, maybe, and flavor as well. So the Reborn Cohort are Solar Auxilia, you know, members who are maybe a bit older, maybe they've retired. They're the people who gained all the glory for the Solar Auxilia in some of the earlier days and have since gone to do something else, like, you know, occupy a world that the Great Crusades moved on from or something like that. But they're still you know, very capable of fighting. So they get plus one leadership and they're stubborn, which is a really big deal because most of the army's got quite low leadership as befits non-space marines. So this really makes a difference to the survivability of these units. They get to reroll once to hit when shooting during a game turn in which they haven't moved as well. So you need to not move in your turn, you know, to get that bonus in overwatch and things like that a lot of the time it doesn't mean you only get a max of one armored tertio and one artillery tertio much like the solar pattern cohort which is a real disadvantage and because they're all old men or maybe they're wounded and they've retired from combat maybe haven't been involved in combat for a while 
they count as initiative one when they're running, sweeping, or reacting, and minus one initiative in melee. So they're, they're much less mobile, but, you know, they stick around, and they reroll the ones to hit. I really love the flavor and the power of this. I think it's it's good for, for, for both reasons. This is really good. Then we've got the Armored Fist Pattern Cohort, the one that everyone wants to see in a book. How do you make an army out of mostly tanks? Well, this is it. Armored Tertios, uh, which is Lehman Russ's pretty much, uh, can be taken as non-compulsory troops, but you only get a single Lehman Russ when you do that. Now, that is useful because it frees up your heavy support slots for other things. Even though you only get one in the Tertio, not multiple, it does help spreading them out. You can also select a Lehman Russ Command Tank, which gains the Cohort Doctrine rules. So, weirdly circular logic this. You know, technically, you only get a Cohort Doctrine when you've already got a guy with the rule. So, in theory, you wouldn't be able to select this. But I think we all know what the rules as intended are here. You take this guy and he runs the armor fist pattern cohort and he gets a five plus invulnerable save on his lehman russ and plus one ballistic skill as well which is really good really good thing to have a tank commander in charge of your army and all infantry in the army which you will have to have some still because infantry will still be your compulsory troops have to start the game in a transport or reserve so standard rule for armored based um armored based sort of right to war and so on so some infantry and some transports and then a bunch of lehman russes pretty much with a, a Lehman Russ commander in charge. Then we've got the Penal Pattern Cohort. So this is uh, exactly what it sounds like. It's sort of a Penal Legion. All the models get Furious Charge, which is nice, but they're not exactly great in combat. Now, they lose close order, so it means they can spread out more loosely. It means they can you know, run around the battlefield. They're a bit faster. They're a bit more of a skirmishy type models rather than your standard auxilia. They can replace their last rifles or their Valkyte Chargers depending on what they've got with lots of more mobile weapons. So las guns with classic stats, auto guns, shotguns, and a single model can take a heavy stubber. Now, obviously, if what you want to do is have a wave of men run up the board and get in close and maybe charge, those weapons are much better than the heavy las rifles. They're not great weapons, though, you know, to be perfectly honest. Although the shotgun does give concussive for assault and still has two shots at close range, and that's probably where I'd be going. If I was going to do this, I'd want lots of guys with shotguns running up the board the last carbine's interesting it's two shots at 18 inch but it's assault so you know you're not having to worry about rapid fire stopping you from charging the stub carbine again is assault three shots at range 12 so they can put out massed fire it's just not very good quality fire and i don't think running these guys up the board to get them into melee is really what you want this army to be doing but the nice thing it does do is give all the rifle sections feel no pain six so you know that's that's a bonus to, to their survivability while they're running up the battlefield they are only toughness three, so you know even Volkite weapons will ignore that feel no pain, but it's still not nothing against things like bolters, etc. And the restriction is that you can take no more than one Velitaris Tertio. So this is you know an army full of penal guys, not elite, uh, not elite infantry necessarily. Now I think this one's mostly for flavor. I don't think it's great. Again, you may never see it on the table, but if someone was to want to con to convert a bunch of penal legions to use, this would be a really interesting you know, way to play. And I think it'd be really interesting to challenge yourself to see if you could win with an army of basically convicts with machine guns, you know, assault rifles running up the board and trying to kill some space marines. It'd be really interesting and quite cool to see on the tabletop. Then we've got the feral pattern cohorts. So again, these are like sort of from... Uh, you know, feral worlds, like more less technologically advanced worlds, that kind of thing. Uh, and they're a bit brutal. You can give their infantry units fear for 25 points per unit. And that's quite expensive when you consider how cheap and fragile most of the units in this book are, because they're just men, pretty much, not space marines. So not the greatest investment of points to do that. It probably should have been cheaper, this, given how uh, fragile the units are. They also get a uh, counter-attack one. Uh, infantry models in a tertio while they're in formation which again is okay but you don't really want these guys in melee to be to be honest either they're much better at shooting they've got to charge because they're quite feral if there's an enemy unit in charge range and the detachment always counts as distrusted allies if it's in an army with other detachments as well which is interesting so again very flavorful this got a very uh, definite theme in it i don't think it's very powerful but it's certainly an interesting thing to do if you're looking to build a themed army. Much like siege pattern cohorts as well. So artillery tertios and armoured batteries can go in your elite slots as well as your heavy support slots. And quite a powerful ability, you get to reroll your scatter dice, but not the scattered distance when firing a barrage or blast weapons. 
and all units with a dedicated transport option have got to take it but don't have to start the game in it. So they're like the infantry support and the artillery. Now, in theory, quite good this. Reroll and scatter uh, with very few drawbacks and all your blast weapons is really good. Unfortunately, the units that you're taking this are not really great as most artillery, uh, as we've seen in Allegiance uh, PDF, the Legacies PDF, sorry. It's kind of similar in this book. The artillery is just not really very powerful. So although this is good, the units it goes with are not great. But that said, if you want to make an artillery regiment, which I rarely do. This is cool. It makes them a bit better, a bit more powerful, maybe probably powerful enough to play in, in some narrative games. And it gives you, you know, the the narrative behind your army as well. It's a siege pattern cohort that you bring into the battlefield. Then lastly, we've got the iron pattern cohort. So this is your standard bring in the robots. So you can bring Castellax and Thalax as elite choices. So Castellax are, you know, okay. They're not the most powerful thing in the game, but they do look very cool. And lots of people like these robot pattern options thalax are very good though they're very mobile they're line they can jump around take objectives they're a bit tougher than the infantry that you would normally take with the solar auxiliary as well so that's quite a cool thing to have access to you can upgrade your characters with cortex controllers for 15 points and the legate marshal gains master automata which we've talked about in in other reviews and you can read about in your books but effectively it lets them control the robots in the army and the same restriction as others no more than one armored or one artillery tertio as well so if you want to run some robots in your army mix and match for cool factor or if maybe none of the other cohort doctrines fit and you want to throw in a few slightly tougher more elite troops in castle Ax and thalax this is a way to get them in or you know if you fancy mechanicum stuff but don't really want a full army of them this and the equivalent in the space marine book actually are a good way to sort of dabble in some mechanicum stuff and put them on the table sometimes so which of these many cohort choices would i recommend well firstly i would say if you're going to theme this army i could recommend any of them lots of them have got good strong themes that you may want to build on or build around or just give you an idea for how you want to paint or convert some models but if what you're looking for are the ones that have got the most game impact you know we'll talk about that so the solar pattern is good the elite troops in the book are good enough to use and making them line certainly makes them a lot more attractive so the solar pattern is pretty cool for that and flying stuff around in harvest lighters is also pretty cool so that's one way you could you could gain some advantage from these doctrines the ultramar pattern doctrine is pretty good for the plus one to hit as well i don't think i would use it for the much bigger tercios because i think they become maybe a bit unwieldy at that point and you maybe you've got too much stuff in one place and you're too vulnerable to blast but certainly the plus one to hit even just to have the option of plus one to hit if you don't use it all the time is quite a good thing and i think the ultramar pattern is quite a good default to use now it does restrict your transport so if you need transport you can just skip this but if you're just looking for one of these to use and you don't really have a particular doctrine in mind this could be one of them equally the reborn cohorts as well plus one leadership and stubborn across the army for a movement disadvantage, which which is a disadvantage, but not a huge one, is also pretty good as well, as long as the limitations don't affect what you're planning to put in the army too much. Plus one leadership and stubborn is massive. So this is a good one just to throw in as well, just to get some buffs from it that are, you know, super useful and super relevant if you're looking for something to run. And then finally, the Armored Fist cohort is pretty good as well. So Liam and Russes are quite good in this book, even if, you know, you don't get huge advantages from this, but being able to put individual Lehman Russes in, you know, three non-compulsory troop slots, four non-compulsory troop slots, rather than have to have them in squadrons in your heavy support slots really does make it much easier to build the army and gives you less disadvantages in, you know, these big vehicle squadrons, which can more easily be taken out. And also as well, having the one Lehman Russ with plus one ballistic skill and a five plus invulnerable save and saving you have to buy a marshal as well at the same time is a nice extra so if you are going to focus on lehman russes or, or tanks or or vehicles in any way really this is also a really good one to take so those four are pretty good the other ones are, are, are much more focused on flavor uh, but like i say any of these could be usable depending on what and why you're building the army so in summary the, the faction rules for solar auxilia definitely reflect a very stylized form of combat you know the overarching theme is men toe-to-toe -to -toe, shoulder to shoulder advancing slowly firing their guns and there's a few ways to modify that but that's the main thing the rules are all mostly focused on the infantry as well and solar auxilia in theory are, are all about their men so you know it's very very focused on uh altering and modifying those things tercio in formation the close order subtype all 
play into and reinforce this theme and encourage you to play that theme to get bonuses as well, which is great. Some of the cohorts enable better masked fire at the cost of needing to densely pack your troops even more, but they definitely give you some powerful buffs. And on the other hand, you can switch to a vehicle heavy build, you know, which the the guard or the solar auxiliary are quite famous for. It's definitely a thing you could play. And I do think is one of the better builds of the army as well. When we get to talk about the units, you'll see Lehman Russes are pretty good. So using lots of Lehman Russes is definitely a way to run this out if you want to. And some of the cohorts, again, enable some quite esoteric builds, which will likely be uncommon. You may never even see them. You know, Heresy is not a huge game, and there's even less people willing to go and paint 300 Feral Guardsmen to run that list. So you may never see it. But, you know, cool in theory. And, you know, for the one guy who goes out and builds that army, more power to you. I look forward to seeing your stuff on the tabletop as well. Great ideas for themed lists if you want them. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do tune in for the next part when I'll be reviewing the rest of the Solar Auxilia Army from the Libra Imperium book. And please do like and subscribe on YouTube as well. It really does help. And also, don't forget to check out our Discord community, which is linked in the video description below. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.